I would fell anything you can that is not going, going to hurt you for an inexperienced person. And, you know, maybe a point of reference would be like, whatever, six inches and smaller. I like following them better. And then, like I had mentioned to you before, if you do want a hinge cut, rough idea would be like, hey, I'm going through there on a normal, a normal stand. You know, don't do more than like one out of 10 trees you're gonna hinge cut or just pick little pockets here and there that are like a quarter of an acre or a tenth of an acre and just do like multiple little pockets. So it's not like this g giant gnarly area that you're like, oh my gosh, and nothing can get through there. You're like, did you make this for rabbits? <laughs> Deer won't go in there. Just make them small. If you want to trash it, that's cool. Just make them really small. So even worst case, a deer are like, no, I can get around this. No problem. It's not giant. You know, we're talking this pretty small area, you know, which would be like 20 trees. Yeah, you can trash that. Yeah, I took everyone down and it was a tangled mess. That's fine. Just don't do not do it like two acres or something. That's crazy. Okay. Just very small areas. What about when you actually chop the trees down? Does it ever get too impassable? from doing that i don't have that unless unless i chop down something that it, that i should have treated like a, a black locust the only time it's going to be unpassable is if if i were to chop the stuff down and an invasive got in there like bush honeysuckle i've seen it impassable with bush honeysuckle or i've seen it impassable many 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 years later if cedars got in there too thick and usually aren't cedars aren't going to take over a hardwood though so i wouldn't worry about cedars and then i've seen it where multiflower rose gets in there so again i'm just going to revert back to two non-native invasives that i want to take and bush and if i had to go multiflower rose versus bush honeysuckle bush honeysuckle is far more pro problematic far more it will take over your forest Multiflower rose generally doesn't. Multiflower rose will get into little pockets. We're like, ooh, that pocket's nasty, and then you can go touch it up. It won't generally take over a whole force. I, it, some people might say, I know of examples. It's pretty rare, though, that I've seen it where it literally takes over the whole force. Bush honeysuckle, on the other hand, I've seen it take over the whole forest. Like, that's all there is. There's no sunlight getting to the floor. There is no new oak trees growing. There's nothing. It totally took over the whole forest. So, between those two, just really watch for bush honeysuckle. Um, and multiflower rose is, is one that I'm just not as concerned about. Mm -hmm. Just just if you're like, hey, I got limited time, just pick back at those areas where like, whoa, that multiflower rose got crazy here. And you could spend two hours and clean up the, the areas that I'm talking about, literally with a chainsaw or with like a, uh, a weed whipper with a blade on it yeah. or with fire or with a mulcher for a skid steer or with a backpack sprayer and spray them. I mean, so there's a million ways to deal with that one. You know, run a little fire through it and spray some of the re-sprouts later. A million ways to deal with it. A million. Uh, multiflower rose, minor. Bush honeysuckle, major, major problem. So, one other, yeah, if you're watching for those. Yeah, one other side tangent on the honeysuckle. Some some guys I've seen, they're like, man, I, I hope my neighbor takes out all the honeysuckle because that's all the cover. What do you say to that guy? Yeah, if, if you just did that, just remove the honeysuckle, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd want to do timber stand improvement along with it. Yeah, it's not a stand so, alone, so it's, yes. it's paired with yeah, something hey, else. Yeah, hey, I just took out the honeysuckle, and I didn't touch the rest of my timber. I didn't get rid of all the junk trees as well. Yeah, you're going you're, you're gonna to be in trouble. Okay. And those people, if that was your approach, which I would say it's just the incorrect approach for deer, for deer reasons— just do sections at a time. If you got eight, if you got 50 acres, your example, you know, and you're worried about, hey, I'm worried the deer won't like this, do like five acres a year. I know it's not quite ideal and we're trying to knock back invasives. I mean, the governmental answer would be to know you eradicate bush honeysuckle at all costs at all time. Well, some of that cost is going to be your deer hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to do that. But there's ways around that, very viable, easy ways around that where... Hey, yeah, I took out all the bush honeysuckle. It's dead. And I also opened the canopy up. I did some hinge cutting. There's all this new growth. There's new forbs and new trees sprouting all over the place. And just keep on the bush honeysuckle so that doesn't come back. And let all the, the natural things sprout back up. And you're going to have a jungle. And those deer are not going to be pushed over to your neighbor's farm. And I would argue 
that if you open that canopy up and you let all this new browse come up and you let it get thick with natural things that are in your forest, the deer from your neighbor's farm that's choked out with no browse, uh-huh. no browse, no, nothing to eat and, and not an ideal forest, they're going to come onto your farm. So let him keep all his bush honeysuckle. The only downside of that is It'll end he's up constantly <laughs> putting seeds on. Yeah. But you're going to, either way, even, even if he didn't, they're going to come in there. Birds drop these things. It's just, now it's just light maintenance. Once you get rid of the bush honeysuckle, now it's just light maintenance. And especially on 50 acres, this is a matter of a couple hours a year. If you eradicated them once, now I'm going to go through my forest and find little ones and I'll spot spray them or, or cut them off and treat them or whatever you want to do or light a fire through there. Now it's really, really easy to deal with. But, but now... But that my bush honeysuckle's gone, and I've got some hinge cutting done, and I've got lots of sunlight hitting the floor, and I've got natural regeneration of of uh, the trees and new woody growth, woody browse, and all the other the forbs and legumes that come up. Yeah, you're gonna have an ideal, ideal, desirable forest. Now. Okay, so step one, TSI. Step two, eradicate invasives. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Jake Hofer and I'm a real estate agent out of the state of Illinois. And it's my goal to help 100 people buy their first farm. I've been doing that with the land podcast and clips like this every single Thursday and Saturday that are released here on the channel. And to be one of those 100 people, all you have to do is if you're in the state of Illinois and I can help you, I'd be happy to do so. Number two, if you want to get connected with someone that can help you, reach out and I'll be happy to get you in contact with an agent that I would personally do business with. And the last one is if you just simply learn something from the content we're putting out or you get inspired to take action, I want to know, get you out of that spreadsheet. I'm on a mission to help 100 people. Until next time, see ya.